Hi, I'm Brad Dacus. I'm an attorney and president of the Pacific Justice Institute. Uh, we have with us on the show today uh, a gentleman who is a representative of the National Day of Repentance, uh, Reverend uh, Jim Wilson. Uh, now, uh, Jim, let me ask you something. This, this National Day of Repentance, uh, you know, it's, it sounds you know, very noble. Uh, it sounds uh, very practical. It's a grassroots effort, as I understand it. It certainly is. Yes. You know, uh, basically just getting people to get back with God and, and well, get back about with refo- their faith. It's about refocusing our attention on God. The fact is, we tend you know, we tend to become self absorbed. Everybody does. Right. Uh, some people say that's just human nature. Other people say that's human sin. You can say whatever you like. Right. But the bottom line is that when we focus on God, things tend to go well. When we focus on ourselves, not so much. Yeah. And so, well, National Day of Repentance sense. is just an effort to say, hey, let's let's you know let's reset. Let's hit the reset button. We sit by and step back and say, okay, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, I, I know uh, oftentimes when uh, when men hit the age of 40, mm-hmm. uh, they go through this midlife crisis, sometimes 50 or something. Mm-hmm. And the one good thing I see about that is it's it, it sort of it's a time in life where we step back and we say, okay, what am I living for? Uh, what's life about? Uh, you know, why am I here? Those are some very good t- Those are really excellent times. If in those times we turn to God, uh, as opposed to turning to a new Maserati or a trip to Tahiti. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you so. mentioned, well, you mentioned midlife crisis. Yeah. Crisis, as you know, is an old word that means danger plus opportunity. Oh. When we're in danger, we have an opportunity. And if that opportunity, you know, relates or results in refocus on God, it's a real good opportunity. Yeah. One it's not a, to be missed. It's a, it's a good crisis, if you yeah. will. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how can we navigate this uh, this National Day of Prayer, what we need well, to do, let, what let, this, this new revival, what... Let me tell you, first of all, that the National Day of Repentance is set in the context of, the, of our conviction that God is calling for a fourth, we've had three in the past, a fourth great awakening. And he's calling his church, he's calling the body of Christ. This is not for everybody who doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't serve Jesus as their Lord. God bless you all, but you know, we're, not, we're not saying you need to do this, we're saying we need to do okay, this. Okay, so this is right? specifically to the body of Christ. Sure, and anybody else who wants to, but what I'm saying is this is not a guilt trip on the American public. Right. This is a call to action for the church. Right, call to action to, to, to really be the church. But, but God actually issued three very powerful prophetic words back in 2008. And you know he 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 tends to leave a word in force until it's been until it's been fulfilled. So you said in two thousand eight. Yeah. God left us with three prophetic words. Yeah. Okay. Where did he leave them? Well, honest, he he actually he actually uttered them at a little church convention in Fresno, California, and then he then he announced to, to okay. one of the leaders. Okay. How did he utter them? Did people hear in a prayer. voice from heaven or? Oh was my there gosh! There's there are as many happened? different ways for God to utter a word. Oh, I know that. I, I know. I'm just wondering. I, what I'm saying is, I don't even know how to answer that question except to say he uttered them. You know, he's he's able. He's capable. He invented it, speech. Right. He's capable of making himself understood. So in other words, he he put it on the on he put the, it on people's the hearts. minds and hearts yeah. in, in unison. Yeah. That this is uh, the, the the words that that we need to uh, to focus on and to fulfill. And I'm not trying to dodge your question. I'm just saying it's too big a question for one answer. No, I totally understand. But he did lay it on people. I totally understand because I just know the audience will be, be sure. sort of wondering because because God does speak in, in many different ways. In yeah. my own life, yeah. I've seen that. Oh, he speaks audibly, so, but he also speaks through billboards. You know, he'll he'll, right. he'll speak through something you find in your pocket. It's he can do it any way he wants. Right. So anyway, so so this this happened in 2008. These these, these words uh-huh. that were manifest and confirmed. Um, yeah. And a lot of people who were there at that, that event. Well, not only that, not only that, but he made it clear sometime afterward. He said basically, and this is a word he gave to me personally. Right. He said, "Hey, I hope you don't think I released those powerful words for that little convention in Fresno. Yeah. This is for my body around the world. Right. Right. So I've been trumpeting them ever since, and I'm not the only one. No, no, I, mean, I know that. No, no. What was the first words? I'm, I'm really first I want to word. Know this. I'm curious. First word was simply release the spirit of worship. Now I know that sounds very churchy and very spiritual, but the bottom line is that when we worship. We come into God's presence. When we come into God's presence, we're a whole lot more open to what He's saying and what He's doing. That's very. You know what? So, I, I'm going to say something. I, I I know in my own personal life mm-hmm. uh, that is so so true. Uh, when I'm under attack uh, and I enter into worship with the Lord, Amen. Um, I get I get the peace of the Lord. Uh, I get the discernment from the Lord, uh, and uh, and just uh, understand. I seeing seeing things more from God's perspective. Uh, and that's what uh, a huge blessing. You know, I, I often do a lot of guest preaching at churches, sure. mm-hmm. uh, and I do that uh, without charge. If you're listening out there, you want me to speak at your church, your pastor, you're going on a golf trip someday. Remember this. Um, but anyway, when I, when I guest preach at churches, sometimes they'll have they'll say, "Well, see, Brad, you know, we want you to be in this the green room. Mm-hmm. You'll be in the separate room over here, and then when the worship's done, we'll we'll give you the signal. You come out on stage and you preach to everyone." Mm-hmm. And I tell them, I say, 
Well, you know, generally that's 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 fine and and, and all, but um, but generally though, I like to be out there in the you worship. Like to be part I like to participate in the worship because the worship is part of the preparation for, me, for delivering and teaching the word. But let me say something even more radical than that, Lord. Sure. Or, or Lord. I just called you Lord. Good Lord. No, Help no. me. Brad. <laughs> Brad. The worship um, is not supposed to be yeah. done. Ever. Right. God is saying to us, you need to not just be people who worship, but people of worship. People of worship. What's the difference? Don't know, it's people, who, people of worship are people who don't know how to turn it off. Now that doesn't mean you have to go shopping with a praise band in your car, but right. it does mean that your that your mind is constantly, your heart is constantly focused on praising God. And the fact is, you and I are not capable of producing that in ourselves. Right. Only but God the Holy, is. Only the Holy Spirit, right? But God is. So what God is saying is, ask me and ask me and ask me and ask me, and I will slowly grow this spirit of worship right. in you that you can release. Right. I, That's what He's talking yeah, about. Yeah, and I I know exactly where you're coming from. It's continually acknowledging Him in all things. Mm -hmm. And that's not just a, a, a general kind of expression. Um, I believe that is something that God really wants us to do, is to acknowledge Him in, in all our ways, um, and, uh, and He will direct our paths. And, and I think that that's, uh, that's, a, that's very practical uh, in our lives as Christians. But we get, we, I think we sometimes get so content in our own direction and our own independence. Exactly. That, you get self-absorption. Self-absorbed, yeah, just exactly. We, don't, we feel like we don't really need to do that. Uh, why do I need to, to, you know, to bring God into this situation when I think I can do it on my own? Here's what's happening. There is an outpouring going on around the world right now. And, and if you're focused on people's needs, yeah. you may or may not notice it. If you're focused on what people are doing about people's needs, there is an outpouring of caring for others in all kinds of ways. He, uh, you know, healing, medic, whether it's medical arts or prayer, feeding the hungry, forgiving people. This is breaking out all over the world. But we've got to presuppose that this is happening much more effectively in an atmosphere of worship, in an atmosphere right. that's celebrating God's presence wherever we go, right. in, an, in an atmosphere that actually expects God will keep his word when he says, in the very hour you need it, I'll teach right. you what you're to do and what you are to say. That's all about releasing that spirit of worship. Yeah. Okay. That's excellent. Excellent. Now, yeah. so I think if that's, that alone is huge. I mean, just I, to, I, I that, agree. And that's just the, the first word. I think there's word. a reason that was the first word released. Yeah, that, that's the first word's released. Yeah. That's... Very significant. We could just theoretically stop right there and, and be heavily challenged oh, by the body hope, of Christ. But I hope we don't. But we're not because you have, there are two other word, uh, well, sets of the words. the second that word. What was that? The second word was right out of the book of Joshua. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose okay. this day whom you will serve. Now, that was a question that Joshua put to the Hebrew people back when they were getting ready to cross the Jordan River, right. you know, uh, three and a half thousand years ago. But here's the deal. When we choose to serve God, we drop our agenda. Okay. Everybody's got an agenda. Everybody's right. got, this is the thing I think is really, really, really important. And God is saying, how about dropping your agenda and just focusing on me and I'll let you know what's important. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's, that's, it uh, transforms everything. And again, refocus our attention on God instead of on me. And the third word, and this is just as important, sure. is rise, take up your pallet and walk for the time of paralysis is past. Now, this is not necessarily an address to a certain individual who happens to be subject to paralysis. It's an address to the church to say, right. you know what? You've been picking at each other. You've been sniping at each other. You've been circling the wagons and doing your programs instead of instead of, instead of of going out and sharing the good news with the world right. for centuries, and you've been paralyzed. Right. How about standing up and walking in the authority I gave you way back when I rose from the dead? The authority for purposes of, of the authority of to bring out, good news, to bring good news, the authority to, to feed people, the authority right. to take care of people, that's right, the authority to challenge people to be yeah. all that they can be. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and of course, if you're if you're interested in in, in that sort of thing, then what you want to do is our, our website. I think I gave it to you in, in an earlier interview, but I want to yeah. give it again. It's www.dayofrepentance.org, and at say that, that one website, more time. www. www. www dayofrepentance.org dayofrepentance.org okay. if you go on that website you're going to find particularly as we as we get closer and closer to April the 30th which is the next scheduled National Day of Repentance you can, you can do whatever you feel led to do to observe that day but if you want to know what other people are doing go on the website yeah. if you are if you represent an organized ministry of any kind and you want to affiliate with Day of Repentance go on the website Adopt our very, very simple, very generic statement of faith, and then say, we're going to do such and such on April the 30th, and then other people can be inspired by what you are doing. But right. dayofrepentance.org. Dayofrepentance.org. You know, Jim, I, I, uh, I think you've given us plenty to, to ponder on. Thank you. I think the day of repentance, uh, 
I see nothing but positive uh, coming from it. Thank you very much. Brother. And uh, I just really salute you for following what the Lord has put on your heart to do, because I know that's what's driving you and uh, the others, others involved in this. And uh, I just really pray for God's full blessing on that and, uh, and success, not just as an event, but as a life-changing act of obedience for everyone participating in, uh, in what we're doing here to, uh, through this event. Thank you uh, very much, Jim. God bless Amen. you. Thank you so keep much. Keep up your great work. Thank you. God bless Thank you. you.